Hello everyone, this is Vor from Sketchpunk Labs, and I'm here to int introduce to you a new open source project I'm working on. As you can see on the screen, it looks like nodes. And if you ever use Shader Forge or use a game engine that has like node type of based system to do a bunch of coding, this is exactly what you're seeing. Um, this is gonna be basically a shader generator uh, using nodes, and it's gonna be web-based, it's gonna be open source, It's going to be available for everyone to use. So let me just go do a quick demo of how it works. So if I press the space bar, I generate all the source code that I needed for a fragment shader to generate this final texture. And in, in a, inside the console, you can kind of see the, some of the debug stuff that I have to kind of help illustrate it or to really show me how it really works. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of traverses through, it takes the final color and then it kind of builds up the tree. And if, if outputs the final uh, fragment shader that we can, I just threw it into a, an existing template for the rest of what, the, you know, has a ver vertex shader and everything else, and it creates this texture. So there you go, so it works. Um, but like I say, you can, you can go straight forward, um, step forward and put the float, which is a value of one uh, to have, it's, everything's kind of hard coded right now uh, for the most part. and put it into the X channel, and if I were to run this again to compile it, it turns into red. Because like I said, I'm actually putting one value into the X channel, which is which is basically the R channel, really. And um, it makes everything red, because it's a one. Um, you know, I can get rid of smooth step. I can take noise, put it into Y, or G and B channels. Click compile. Now there's no more smooth stepping. Now you actually see the raw noise. Um, this multiplier kind of multiplies, I think, a value of like 40 uh, to the UV values. It kind of scales up the noise. So this is where you kind of zoom out. So if I take away that zooming, that scale value from noise and just put the straight up UV values into it and recompile it, you kind of see a gradient. But this is, I'm like really zoomed in into the noise uh, texture. So um, yeah, so the, and there's, there's the final code of how to implement it. You know, it just, you have your float of one, gets dumped into uh, the UV gets dumped into noise and then you just take your your float value and your two noise values and flow it again and just dump it into your final color the end so there you go GLSL code generated from no nodes uh, this project is built off two projects of mine uh, node editor uh, which I kind of was gonna build a, an automation tool that never w went anywhere uh, I just it just went into a prototype uh, UI thing, uh, but I kind of really wanted to show it to you because where I can go uh, in this direction because I have animated uh, lines and things like that. Um, looks pretty. Look to me, looks pretty neat. You know, you can like I said, it it is functional where you can actually have different colors while it drags and reconnects. So yeah, it's disconnect and you can just boom, reconnect whatever, uh, and it's also built off my uh, WebGL. Uh, f fungi f uh, framework, which is kind of a graphics graphics engine uh, built in uh, using WebGL 2.0, and uh, this is and this is a series of how I built it from the scratch up. So if you guys are interested in uh, WebGL as well, you know dealing with vertices and um, rendering um, pipelines and whatnot. Um, in this series, I go through everything. I go from the ver we build the fungi graphics engine from the ground up, so you can do single vertice all the way up to uh, voxels and uh, um, textures. And this is th when I started doing these texture things uh, recently, uh, that's when I decided to build a tool for it. And uh, every game engine needs tools. And since Fungi at some point will be a web game engine, um, I need tools. And um, everything in this is gonna be built from scratch. There's no uh, 3.js, there's no Third party, anything at all, really, in this frame, um, this open source project. Everything's gonna be built from the ground up, so um, everything's gonna be streamlined and f focused just for this project. Um, if you're interested in, uh, well, obviously, if you want the code, it's right here at GitHub. Uh, you can come and get the code right now. Um, I have a web server built in for it. For if you want to join it with some of the development or run it. Uh, it because I'm using ES6 modules and you kind of need a web server. So if you have Go and you don't trust me, you can just compile the source code for uh, the web server. And it has a config file already, so it uses the port number. And if you were to clone this with a folder called Shader Blocks, this will work for you right out of the box. 
Um, I have a Twitter, so you can keep track. You can track uh, everything that I do, especially when it comes to this project. Um, I'm already illustrating that I'm built rebuilding the UI where it's flexible. So I have a single set of HTML code, and applying, let's say, a theme A creates this. Then apply theme B, it creates that. So this way, I have very two different styles, um, but based off the exact same HTML code. So I don't need to change the XML code or the HTML code to um, to change the look. So I'm trying to make everything very flexible. And I'm using every the latest things that's related to web, you know, like ESX uh, modules. I'm using uh, CSS grids, um, Flexbox, using all the fun stuff, uh, transitions and whatnot. And again, like I said, I'm not using any third-party frameworks. Everything's going to be built, built from the ground up from scratch because that's how I roll. That's how Sketchpunk rolls. Um, <laughs> so I have a Trello. Uh, you can keep, uh, if you want to come in and contribute ideas, uh, you can also contribute ideas with uh, in GitHub. Uh, some people have done in previous projects like feature requests and, and, you know, with you through issues. But I also have Trello, which kind of keeps my to-do list and probably I'm going to have like a list of all the things I'm kind of currently building for this project. Um, so you can keep track of that. And um, I, a lot of people have already started asking me, some people already started asking me about um, contributing. Uh, you can come and look at the source code, try it out, play around with it, look at it, and give me some ideas, but don't contribute yet until I, I guess I make the alpha version. Um, the alpha version will be released once I have the UI completely put together. Um, when I redo WebGL, because I need WebGL to be redone, because um, I can't use the Fungi engine that I have now. I need to strip it down and make a mini version of it uh, to make it reusable in a certain way that I need it to work. And I need to work in Firefox. Right now, it only works in, what, in Chrome. So I need to fix whatever. I don't know what the problem is with Firefox, so I need to fix that too. Uh, so if I'm building it for the most part from the ground up, I can quickly find where uh, Firefox breaks everything or where I break on Firefox. And the... Uh, creating a different uh, class hierarchy for, for the nodes because I want to I have a nice certain idea how I want the nodes to work. Right now it's just a single class, but I want to create a class hierarchy um, for my reasons. Like if you really cared, I have descriptions for why I'm doing certain to-dos. And the end result, really, I, wanted, I want it to look something like this. I really love this idea of preview, preview every step of the way. And I like the idea of where I have this node and I'm going to just, the idea, I'm just traverse up the tree and get all the other previews, I guess, or really just really re recompile, um, or just compile the, the GLSSL code or the shader code for, like, let's say this tree section, and then um, and then just output the val the preview value for here. So, so this is the, kind of one of my main milestones of the project: be able to build like a frame, an I a UI like this, where you can kind of write your code in a visual way and actually see it preview every step of the way. So instead of just seeing like a multiply, like right here, just multiply, uh, I would love to be able to see the preview of what a multiply looks like visually um, compared to where it's connected to. So like if it's connected to UV, let me see what it looks like visually so I can actually get a sense of the idea. Like this is what a UV would actually look like as a preview. So that, like I said, it'd be great to see that. And then you can kind of see where it goes from there and so forth and so on. and. Like I said, it'd be kind of great to build this as a at at, at, a, at on the web. Um, it'd be a fun uh, thing to do, and like I said, it, and I like doing fun things. So, and I love doing this stuff. This is what I want to do with my life. I wanted I want to build visual tools. Uh, I love building tools. I love graphics. I love drawing, and uh, this is um, the best direction for me. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So Shader Blocks, that is the new open source project from Sketchpunk Labs. And I um, hope to see you guys in the next video when I have the final alpha version built in, where I then I kind of open up for everyone else to kind of come in and contribute and make it more of a community project instead of me just being this little coding schmuck uh, coding away in the corner of the internet. So thank you for watching. Um, like and subscribe if you're interested in following the progress. And um, see you guys at the next video.